Hello there, Bethel Baptist Church. Thank you so much for just spending a few moments with me here. I want to take God's Word and share with you something I believe will be an encouragement to you. Have you ever wondered what God's will is for your life? Uh, I have. I remember, uh, you know, about to graduate high school. And, uh, you know, people would come in, preachers would come in, and they would talk about, you know, doing the will of God for your life. And, uh, you know, it really got me thinking, what is God's will for my life, you know? And, uh, you know, I prayed about it. I remember, I remember begging God, God, what do you want me to do uh, with the life that you've given to me? And I had a great earnest desire, you know, to, to fulfill God's will uh, for me, for my life. And, and uh, you know, I kind of put uh, God's will in a box. And a lot of times I'll, I believe we do that. You know, we kind of package it together. You know, who are we going to marry? You know, we got to know God's will. Who are we going to marry? Uh, what are we going to do, you know, with our life? Uh, what kind of career are we going to have? Where, you know, a big question for me is what college was I going to go to? You know, what was going to be my major? Um, you know, those things. And, uh, you know, we always kind of think of the will of God in a future uh, tense, you know, what are we going to do down the road? And, uh, you know, God's word tells us what his will is for our lives. Um, would you like to know that? Uh, I want to share that with you. And uh, there's 23 times that the phrase will of God is mentioned in the Bible. And I want to share a couple of them with you, uh, what God's will is for your life and what God's will for my life is today. And uh, do you want to do God's will? I sure hope you do. I do. And we need God's help to do that. And so let's look before we look at what is God's will. Let's look and see in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, uh, the kind of the condition of doing God's will. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he gives us a condition. He says, hey, if you want to do the will of God, we cannot be uh, conformed to this world. We must be transformed with the renewing of our mind. It's all about our our mind, how we think. Do we have a carnal mind, a worldly mind, or do we have a spiritual mind? And whenever we set our heart, our mind, our eyes on Christ, doing the will of God for our life is going to be so much easier. It's going to be possible, as a matter of fact. And God wants us to do His will. So, now we know the condition. We have to have our, our mind right towards the Lord and uh, not have a carnal mind. Let's look in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3, is very simple, very clear. He makes it very obvious what the will of God is. And verse number 3, for this is the will of God. Isn't that awesome whenever, you know, you ask God, what is God, what is, what is your will for me? And He says, this is the will of God. He makes it so very obvious to us, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. He says, this is God's will for your life, for my life, that we stay away from fornication, that we live a pure and holy and clean life before the Lord. And that's God's will for your life, not down the road, but today. And so God says, hey, I want you to stay pure. I want you to stay clean. I want you to stay right. Don't get involved with the things of this flesh to, to please um, your flesh and, and those uh, ungodly desires. There's so many things in our world today on our phones, computers, uh, on TV. Oh my goodness, it, it's, it's so very difficult to keep your mind right and your heart right which will eventually lead um, to, your, to your actions being right and doing right. He says, make sure that you are abstaining from those fornications, those unpure, unclean uh, things that we do with our vessel, our, our body. And then he also says um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18, he says this, For in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That makes it very clear, again, what is God's will for you. He says, in everything give thanks. It is God's will for you today to be thankful. <laughs> How about that? It's God's will for you to be thankful for the ups and for the downs, for the goods and for the bads, uh, for you to say, God, thank you for the day that you've given me. Thank you for the family that you've given to me. Hey, no, the day is not perfect and our family is not perfect and our boss is not perfect and our, our situation, you know, may not be perfect right now, but you know what? We ought to be thankful. He says, this is the will of God for you today in everything 
give thanks. In everything, give thanks. May God help us to, to do God's will in our lives today, to be thankful for everything. And I want you to re rem remind yourself who's writing this. Paul. Paul the persecuted. I mean, he was, he'd gone through all kind of turmoil, all kind of trouble in his life, but he said, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And then also, uh, the Bible makes it very clear what God's will is. Uh, look over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 15. He says, So is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. He says, the will of God for your life, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. We, it is the will of God for us as Christians to do well, to do the right thing. And when we do the right thing, even though our world is not doing the right thing, even though our country uh, seems like it's kind of imploding and people are doing very foolish things, he says when we as Christians do the right thing and the honest thing and the just thing, when we do the will of God, it's going to silence the voice of the critics and it's going to silence those foolish men. And so may God help us to do the will of God uh, today. And uh, that's exactly what God wants us to do. I know, you know, it's so easy to say, hey, I want to do God's will, but it can be a, a challenge. So I want to encourage you, hey, make sure that our, our minds are right. Make sure that we're living right. Make sure we're doing right. You know, Ben Franklin said, um, uh, well done is better than well said. And all of us can say what the will of God is and how we're supposed to uh, live our life. But he says, well done is better than well said. And so may God help us today. Uh, to live our life according to the will of God and to do it with a, with a heart of thankfulness and to do it in a right way, in a pure way, in a holy way. So church, I hope that would be an encouragement for you today. May God help all of us to do His will for us, not tomorrow, but today.